Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Hi, I'm Sally Roper, and I'm coming to you from Ocho Rios in Jamaica. And this is the third in a series of three unloadings that I'm doing in preparation for a uh, craft market, or a, well, it's an arts and crafts fair uh, this Sunday in Jamaica, and uh, I'm really excited. We haven't had one for the last few years because of COVID. So this is a chance for me to get back into the fold and reconnect with uh, my clients and people who like to buy my pottery. Anyway, my kiln is open. I opened the lid about uh, an hour ago to give it uh, a chance to cool down. Oh, probably cooled down about 20 degrees. It's now at 99 uh, Fahrenheit. So it's okay to unload. So I'm gonna make this quick. I don't have a lot, as I said in the last video. I had um, too much for one, not enough for two. So I did two soft ones. Uh, soft ones being, being that I didn't ram the kiln with uh, bisqueware or glazedware. Anyway, let me get on with, uh, with what I have. So um, I made these um, vase. Uh, let me see it's four eight it's about uh, nine and a half inches tall uh, about four inches wide at the top and this is done um, with opulence glazes again most of my dipping glazes are opulence um, and I uh, I dip this but I really like this color it's very it's a very tropical color I had some dripping on the inside and I didn't bother with it because um, if, it's a, if it just sits for decoration up against a wall, you can put it in the back uh, or in the front, sorry, and you won't see it. And if you put flowers in the pot, you're not gonna see it either. So I didn't concern myself with trying to uh, eliminate or get that drip out of there when I glazed. I, I did correct it on the rim, but I didn't bother. Um, I didn't bother go down any farther. Anyway, this is uh, Turquoise and Eggshell by Opulence. So let me see if I can show you the pretty color of the opulence eggshell. Anyway, this is um, a pretty nice little piece. And this is my, uh, my stamp. So I'm going to create a signature series where it'll have my signature on the bottom and only I will sell it. I have um, this uh, where I will use my stamp and I might give these to uh, a couple of people to wholesale. I don't like to wholesale my stuff and uh and that's it and then i'm going to have a limited series so it might be something that i kind of find fashionable in the moment and i might make 20 or 30 of them so i will number them one out of 20 and that's it i won't make it again so that's kind of where my thought is going so there you go i have a couple of those i have a second one um same turquoise and uh, eggshell on the inside but no drip <laughs> A little drip here on the outside but uh, on the inside so this is a really really pretty it's uh, a dipping glaze and uh, and I really like it the opulence glazes are very easy to use okay this is a utility carafe um, uh, a utility crock I guess um, you can use it beside your stove and put your um, your metal or your wooden utensils that you use in cooking. It's, it's a really good size. So it is for, it's about seven inches tall and maybe about six and a half inches wide. Again, my hand is four inches. So it makes a, a, a really good measuring tool. And, uh, and I, I, I do this quite often and uh, to get the finished size when, when I don't have a ruler nearby. This is opulence eggshell on the inside and on the outside is antique iron. And then I turned around and I dipped it to about here in eggshell to about here. And then this is just the, the flow and the run of the two glazes together. So they're both in the reduction look series of uh of opulence and they play nice together and they run together so you have to be careful if you're going to overlap them do not take it down too far or it's going to run onto the shelf and into the bottom so again i took this only uh, not uh, not even halfway down and look at i got about three quarters of the length of drip uh, of, of run not drip there's no drips in this okay and I always make things in pairs, and uh, this is no different. So this is the same antique iron 
an eggshell on the inside and eggshell dipped to about there and I get just that little bit of, of flow to take it down a little bit farther. And this again, same process. This is one of the vases, did the same thing. This is um, antique iron and eggshell. And I love how the eggshell on top brings out this be really pretty blue. And, um, and I find that because if you ever use eggshell and you look at it, and I can't show it to you, but there's lots of kind of like different colors in there. And uh, depending upon what you uh, layer this on top of, you're gonna get some very interesting results. But I've done this one before. It's tried and true and keeps coming out exactly the same. I just remember that if you do it, do not layer and take the top layer down too far or it's going to run and stick to your shelf. Okay. And well, I can't say that I'm terribly crazy about this one, but this is coyote, a C O Y O T E, whether they call it coyote or coyote, I don't really know. Um, this is their cobalt, uh, which I love, which is, which is um, not really a celadon, but it behaves like a celadon. Um, eggshell on the inside. What I did was I did some, um, some semicircles of, of Mako flux. And then I put dollops of wine about it on the outside. And you can't really see it too much. But um, anyway, it gave, the flux gave some really nice flow. I put the flux on really, really heavy. And then, um, you know, you just see a little bit of the, of the wine. But wine about it is stroke and coat. Sorry, could you say that again? Hmm. Sorry. I'm having trouble here. <laughs> my watch is talking to me. So uh, so this is opulence on the inside, coyote on the outside, and mako uh, uh, on that. So these glazes play well together. All right. And this is my, um, this is my witness cones. So I did, I fired it to cone five with a 15 minute hold. And uh, you can see that the five cone, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> touched the plate that I set these on and I got a really good bend so I almost I would say that's really close to five and a half if not just a little bit more and which is exactly what I'm looking for I I think that that um, the glaze combination and the uh, uh, B mix 5 clay that I use it 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 works really well at this temperature and it's just what I always fire to cone 5 medium with a 15 minute hold and there you go. Okay. And I have advancer shelves. <laughs> Best investment ever. All right. So I made some of these, um, these trays. These are GR pottery forms. And uh, this is, I believe it's Sky. I dipped it in Sky. And because my pot wasn't big enough, I did a little bit of an overlap and, and that's come out a little bit darker. I don't really mind, but anyway. Um, and then I have, I rolled the clay. I had made a slab of clay and I rolled the clay on FlexiBat. They had these uh, textured mats. And as I was rolling, you can see that I almost got like a double imprint. It, it, I didn't roll it very well, but I decided that what the heck, I'm just gonna keep it looking like that. So it's, it's kind of neat. Anyway, this is the, uh, as I said, GR Pottery Forms. It's their oblong series. I think it's new. I don't really know. It's new to me anyway. And that is um, Amico Sky, the glaze. Okay. Yeah, I only had that one piece on the shelf just because like I said, I, okay, these pieces, Okay, well that's all right. Okay, this is using that same FlexiBat uh, Monstera leaf uh, design. Uh, I rolled the, uh, I rolled out a slab and then I put the FlexiBat mat on top and I rolled it and, and made the impression on the clay. And then I draped over the GR pottery form. So this one, um, this one is going to sit inside that one. So this is, um, hmm, 
This is Aqua and this is Sky. And then, yeah, yeah, you'll guess it. I have a third one. And it's in cobalt. And you can see the impression. It's not very deep. Uh, these mats don't leave a, a, a very deep impression, but so they're gonna work really well with uh, celadons as the, as the glaze to use so that the celadon uh, really brings out the texture of whatever it is that you're imprinting onto your clay. So now I can show you the three pieces. I like to do things in sets. I don't know, I don't make it easy for myself, but there you go, there's the, the set of three. And um, I got no warping whatsoever. It's my first time using these forms. So, uh, first time using these forms, so I'm really excited that there was no warping. Okay, and then it's just some random mugs because like I have this sale, I have sets that I made and unloaded uh, in my first kiln unloading, and I just want to have some singles. So this is cobalt with uh, opulence eggshell on the inside. A little bit of dripping on the inside edge. I kind of like it. It, it, it makes the inside a little soft, but that's a, a pretty mug. And um, Jamaicans love cobalt blue. So this is a full dip in cobalt blue. And there's blue on the inside, blue on the outside. Different shape. Again, just selling it as a single. And this is um, just a single dip in aqua. And uh, I, I kind of like it. My daughter says I always, because I like to do things in multiple colors and stuff like that, she said, no, mom, why don't you do some in single colors? So that's what I've done here. This is Opulence Marshmallow. It is a uh, like a satin mat. Really, really nice. And this one is, uh, again, uh, well, uh, you can see some dripping. Kind of weird as I, as, I, as I took it out and and the, the glaze dripped on the outside. Again, these are dipping, and this is Amico Sky. So let me show you that. That's a better indication of what the color is. So that's kind of nice. I love the feel of it. That's just a really nice, silky feeling mug. Okay, we're down, I believe, to the last layer. <laughs> and one thing in here that I was anxious to look at so, um, all right, this is opulence eggshell on the inside, and this is uh, Clayscapes Cranberry made by Jessica Putnam Phillips. It's her formula. I had a lot of trouble with it earlier, and um, it, it was very grainy when I was using it, and so I did speak to Jessica, and she said, give it a, a, a run through an 80 mesh, 80 mesh sieve, and I did that and some, uh, there was some um, uh, stuff left behind and I'm really glad. So anyway, I have now used this and it's come out, I think it's come out exactly as it's supposed to. And I'm really glad that I, that I took the time to run it through the sieve and because uh, it has made the glaze behave the way it is supposed to. And now I like it before I did not like it. So it's kind of, and this is um, opulence eggshell, and then I dip the bottom in the cranberry, and interesting result. I can't say that I'm terribly thrilled with it, uh, because I was hoping that it would be a solid color. Um, but anyway, it, it is the overlapping. It's a full dip in the, in the um, eggshell, and then I just took the bottom and I just dipped it into the, dipped it into the pot up to, up to here. And it's kind of made it like with oil spots. So you're either gonna like it or not like it. But I have a few, a few mugs like that. I did a, a set of four. And here, here are the other three. And that one came out a little darker and maybe a little better. Maybe I held it in the glaze a little bit longer, but you can see it's, um, it's spotty. But um, anyway, I, I don't mind it. Somebody will like it. At least I hope they do anyway. Okay, 
Now this is Poppy. Okay, so it's a textured tray. And then I took black underglaze and I and uh, I like a, made it a wash. I, I really diluted it with a lot of water and I brushed it all over and then I wiped it back. Um, it couldn't help because the rolling pin that I used is a little grainy, so I couldn't eliminate the uh, the under the black wash on the surface entirely. But this is Poppy. Um, it's too two coats on the outside of poppy so that's what it looks like on its own and then this is what it looks like with the with the black wash on the inside so it kind of antiques it a little bit i, I like it but i like that color uh, it's a really nice kind of very soft orangey color but there it is natural and there it is with the black underglaze wash all right two more pieces this is another cranberry um, by Clayscapes, cranberry and opulence eggshell on the inside. So I have a pair of those. They, that's actually a nice little pair of mugs. Th those, no doubt, those will sell. Okay, and then my last, <laughs> my last peacock mug, uh, bowl, sorry, not a mug. Um, again, I did a full dip on um, into opulence eggshell. I, again, I'm still trying to find out a way to show you just how just how beautiful this glaze is. And then on the inside, I used tuxedo and cottontail stroke and coat. Same process, you know, with the loops of Mako Flex, a dollop of each of these colors. Then I. Um, I covered it in um, the eggshell again, and then I did a second dollop. So this is two coats. So um, there you go. It it came out as I expected. Of course, I had an odd number, so now I have a white beside white, and that's just what it is, and probably nobody would notice if I didn't point it out. So this is, um, that's it. This is the last piece I have to show you of what I'm going to be taking to the marketplace this weekend. So I kind of like the black and white, but it's really, how do I say this? It's broken down. Let me see if I can get this in close and you can see how the black, it's not solid black. When you look at it, it almost looks like there's purples and browns in it. It has broken down as it's, as it's run down the pot. It's, it's pretty. Anyway, that's it. So thank you all very much uh, for watching my video. If you are not a subscriber, then I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything and uh, I, periodically, um, I periodically upload the videos of my unloading and occasionally I do some throwing and, um, and other types of videos just to keep it a little bit interesting so it's not all about kiln unloading. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button. And uh, I really hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to uh, go watch some PGA Championship Tour golf. And uh, I just got a new car this morning. I got, uh, I got a hybrid. Um, it's kind of my little part in what I can do to uh, help the environment and to save a little money on gas. So I'm going to go learn more about my new wheels. So um, anyway, there it is. <laughs> it's my new car. So I'm really super excited and uh, anyway, I'm going to enjoy my ride. So thanks everybody. Have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll see you when I do my next video, which will, who knows when it'll be. Anyway, ciao.